Roll call, Ms. LeBrun. Mr. Barnes. Present. Ms. Cantor. Here. Mr. Davidoff. Here. Mr. Dodge. Here. Ms. Fay. Here. Ms. Kerrigan. Here. Mr. Sweeney. Here. Mr. Winograd. Here. And Mr. Williams. Here. Thank you, Ms. Lebro. I just would like to uh, take a minute to just uh, say that we are thinking about our friends from um, from Florida who have uh, really suffered from Hurricane Michael. Um, I was just reading, I think it's $6.1 billion of damage, uh, property damage, and uh, besides a life and, um, and people's uh, homes and personal um, personal effects and their lives are upside down. Um, I know that the Red Cross is doing a, uh, they have been really, uh, really on the ground there and um, I, I, that's where I have been donating. I'm sure there are other sites, but most of your donations do go uh, right to the, the victims and helping them. So they are in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, with that, we'll go to number four. Ms. Kerrigan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move approval of the minutes of the Town Council meeting 10-9-2018. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, public forum, we don't have anything on the agenda that's not subject to a public hearing, so uh, I'm going to not do my spiel on that. Uh, number six, Ms. Kerrigan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I will replace items 13 through 15 on the consent calendar. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, no unfinished business. Oh, so number eight, Ms. Carrion. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move we set for public hearing on December 11, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the legislative chamber and refer to TPC and CROC, an ordinance of the town of West Hartford permitting sponsorship signage in municipal parks. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. And number nine, this is the fastest that we've ever yeah. gotten to in the town manager's yeah. report. I'm going to come to a speaking halt. <laughs> Mr. Hart. Thank, thank you, Mayor. I'm going to cede most of my time to the MDC, but just three things quickly. And I've distributed copies of my report to the council. 
Uh, car car break-ins. Uh, that's been an issue for our community and our police department, once again, are urging our residents to make sure that you don't leave your keys or your fobs inside unlocked, unlocked uh, vehicles overnight. So in the past three days, four cars have been stolen in town. I believe we've recovered two of those four. So all of those cars, all four of those cars, were left unlocked in residential neighborhoods with keys or fobs in the vehicle. So during this time period, there were no reported thefts of locked vehicles with no keys inside of them. So really just want to encourage our residents, lock your car, don't leave your key or your fob or even another spare key inside your car. Remove all of your valuables from your car at night and call the police if you uh, hear anything suspicious. Just a further note on that, this is not just a West Hartford problem, right? You're yes. going to just speak to that? Yes, it's, it's to some extent uh, a, a regional issue, and I know we've, we've met within the past year, Mayor, I think you were involved in this regional meeting convened by the City of Hartford and adjoining um, neighboring municipalities as well. So it, it is a regional problem. But there's a, a lot that the average resident can do to address it by taking preventative action. That's what we're encouraging people to do. Uh, second, as the council knows, we're working on updating our plan of conservation and development, and we're soliciting feedback from the community at large. So we're conducting a survey. Uh, the survey is found on our project website, which is planwesthartford.com, and the results of the survey we'll share at a community workshop next week. Tuesday the 30th um, from 6 to 8 p.m. in the town hall auditorium. And then last but certainly not least, I wanted to comment on the uh, retirement of our, our fire chief, Gary Allen. Uh, Chief's going to wrap up his 30 year, 30 plus year tenure on November 10th. In the town, we're going to hold a retirement ceremony for him on Tuesday, October 30th, next week from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. here in this room. And uh, also the members of the Public Safety Committee, the Council's Public Safety Committee, will also recognize the Chief at their meeting on November 1st. So the Chief's been here over 30 years, a very dedicated, uh, meritorious service to the town, actively recruiting for his successor, and we'll look forward to uh, recognizing him as he enters into the, the next chapter. So that completes my report, Mayor. Again, we have the MDC here to make a presentation. I don't know if you wanted to handle announcements first or, or do that after, after the MDC presentation. I probably will make announcements now and then we can have the MDC do their presentation. Um, but I do want to, and this was in your section, but I'm going to mention it, Election Day, Tuesday, November 6th. Polls are open from 6 to 8 p.m. Deadline to register online and in person uh, by mail is October 30th, and the Registrar of Voters will be open on October 30th from, from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, special voter registration session uh, will be held that day. And uh, you will need to provide a proof of identity and residency, so don't forget your um, IDs um, of some sort. Uh, and that's that's really all I had for um, that, that piece on election day. Ms. LeBro, is there anything else to add from that? No. Okay. Uh, Charter Oak Academy receives Green Building Award. Fusco Construction is pleased to announce that, that um, Charter Oak International Academy has been awarded the 2018 Green Building Award of Honor from the Connecticut Green Building Council in the Institutional Projects category. The 87,700 square feet circular ha uh, school houses 560 pre-K through fifth grade students and was built to maximize energy efficiency, water savings, and create a park-like environment conducive to collaborative hands-on learning. Sustainable features include a field of geothermal wells and a 100 k watt photovoltaic array on the roof. Designed without boilers, heat pumps are the sources of cooling and heating. The exterior envelope includes high thermal resistance, wall and roof construction, as well as low emissivity, 
emissivity, I guess is the way you pronounce that, glass and thermally broken uh, aluminum framed windows to prevent conductive thermal energy loss. This should be read by an engineer. The school is LEED Gold <laughs> certified. Uh, kindness Project in the Spirit of Compassion, the West Hartford Public Libraries uh, runs this project through November 10th and encourages the public to donate specific items to help restock the shelves of the West Hartford Food Pantry, including toiletries, feminine hygiene products, baby essentials, kitchen items, first aid supplies. Um, I'm sure whatever you need, they need to. Uh, Health District f offers flu vaccines in October, Wednesday, October 24th from 10 to 12 at the West Hartford Senior Center. Um, very, very important to get your flu shot. I already had mine. Uh, police recruitment fair and open house. Uh, if you would like to work for the police department, here's your chance. On October 27th, there will be an open house at, from 12 to 4. Uh, the police department had, presently has nine openings, is hoping to attract qualified members. Um, we also had, these are also in uh, community relations, detective division, traffic division, scuba, K-9, SWAT, motorcycle, bicycle patrol. Uh, we also had a class of three um, new candidates come in, and the two of them are Conard Hall graduates. So that was a, really um, a wonderful uh, way to uh, greet them, and we're very proud of those graduates. Halloween Stroll will be on this Saturday, October 27th, 10.30 to 12.30. Uh, there will be musicians, face painting, fire truck to climb. And the route compasses LaSalle Road, Farmington Avenue, South Main Street, Memorial Road, and Isham Road. And it is fun to watch those little, little, uh, <laughs> little people walk around in costumes. It's really cute. Uh, National Take Back Day, October 27th, uh, will be held at the West Hartford. Um, it will be held at the Department of Public Works at Brixton Street from 10 to 2. And it is uh, joint from the West Hartford uh, Bloomfield Health District. Uh, I think our, I, th I thought our police department was involved with that too, but maybe not on this one. T that is 10 to 2 again on Brixton Street. That's old medications. Uh, West Hartford Hauntings uh, Theatrical Cemetery Tour will be held on Friday, October 26th and Saturday, October 27th. The tour leaves every 15 minutes, starts at 6 p.m. and ends at 8.45. Bless you. The tour is 45 minutes. It's a perfect blend of real history and theater. Lives of past West Hartford residents are researched and recreated to inform the audience about our predators predecessors. Uh, tickets and information are available at nowebster.yapsity.com. Tickets are $15 for adults and $10 for children ages 10 and older. The 16th annual Jazz Brunch Rotary Club of West Hartford uh, will be held uh, at the Hartford Club and will benefit the Gifts of Music, a nonprofit organization providing musical instruments and private lessons to gifted and talented West Hartford public school students with limited financial resources. Uh, you can contact Jim Killian at 860-716-5335. Paul Vicinis is named keynote speaker at Veterans Day. Command Sergeant uh, Major Paul W. Vicinis will be the keynote guest speaker for 2018 Veterans Day ceremony on November 11th at 1 p.m. Uh, usually we have it at 11, so make a note that it's at 1 p.m. At the Connecticut Veterans Memorial West Hartford, corner of North Main and Farmington Avenue. Paul is also the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction for West Hartford Public Schools. Are there any other announcements? No. Um, with, with that, we will uh, I'll kick it back to you, Mr. Hart. Thank you, Mayor. I'll invite our MDC presenter to come forward, and town clerk's going to lower the screens. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much, Mayor, uh, for having us. Uh, my name is Joe LaLiberty. I'm with CDM Smith. Uh, consultant engineer for the MDC on the Clean Water Project and making this presentation on their behalf. <clears throat> All right, we have liftoff. Oh, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Council also has hard copies as part of your book. So here to provide a uh, presentation on the proposed, the MDC's proposed integrated plan, uh, which I'll talk about as I go through the presentation. Uh, but before I move off the cover slide, uh, what you see here on the cover slide is actually the cutter head to the south tunnel boring machine uh, that's going to go from the Hartford wastewater treatment plant in eastern Hartford across Hartford to uh, West Hartford uh, to pick up the sanitary sewer overflows in West Hartford as well as some combined sewer overflows in Hartford along the way. Uh, that cutter head is now down in the ground. Um, they've assembled the tunnel boring machine, and they should begin drilling towards West Hartford, uh, I hear, imminently, so any day now. 
Uh, in your presentation, I provided a, uh, a list of acronyms um, that are used throughout the presentation. Sometimes I use them because I've you know, been in this uh, field uh, my entire career. Sometimes I use them uh, uh, casually uh, because they are in the field, but if you ever need to go back and look at what something is, uh, I provided them right up front. So uh, agenda for uh, tonight, I'm gonna to give a quick summary of the evolution of the MDC's long-term control plan, which is the roadmap for the clean water project on the accomplishments to date. But then gonna spend the majority of the time talking about moving toll with an integrated plan, explaining where the concept comes from, what is, uh, why move in this direction, and what are the high, pan high points of that recommended plan, and then go over the evaluation of two primary alternatives uh, that we're looking at, and then next steps and schedule. So the Clean Water Project, as I mentioned, requires a CSO long-term control plan, and basically that outlines, it goes through all the alternatives and it outlines which projects need to be done over a set period of time to accomplish the combined sewer overflow requirements from DEP. Uh, the original uh, report was submitted uh, in 2005 and was subsequently approved by DEP in 2007. This report is required to be updated, updated every five years. So in 2012, we submitted an update that was approved uh, by DEP in, uh, in, in 14. Um, and then uh, where we are today is talking about the next long-term control plan update, which is due at the end of the year. So a little bit on the prior plan, what did it include, uh, what has been uh, ongoing and completed, and what is remaining. Um, so uh, the first thing is, is we continued with uh, sewer rehabilitation. Uh, a lot of this was done in all of the towns around Hartford, specifically West Hartford. I'll show you numbers about the amount of sewer rehabilitation that we've done in West Hartford. Uh, we were to complete the sewer separation, the ongoing separation areas in Hartford, which are the green areas shown on the map. Um, so uh, if you look at through Hartford, there's a few different green areas, uh, and we have since completed all of those. Uh, we were to complete the wastewater treatment plant upgrades at the Hartford Wastewater Treatment Plant, which is shown in the bottom right-hand corner of the figure here. Uh, those will be done uh, next year, uh, about $500 million worth of, of upgrades. And we were to build the South Tunnel Project that I mentioned, which is the blue line running from Eastern Hartford over to West Hartford. Uh, and we're uh, uh, on pace to complete that by the end of 2023. What's remaining uh, that it was in the 2014 plan was the blue line that goes from the west side of Hartford up towards North Hartford and then across North Hartford over to Northwestern Hartford. And that was to address the remaining combined sewer overflows, primarily in downtown Hartford as well as in North Hartford. And the original concept was to build a tunnel to collect all of those overflows. It was in, we, uh, to eliminate the uh, CSO combined sewer overflow discharges to the north branch of the Park River, which is in northwest Hartford, uh, and capture the remaining overflows during a one-year storm. So that's what we were looking to reevaluate as part of this long-term control plan update. So how about progress to date? Uh, before we started the clean water project uh, in 2004, uh, the, the MDC discharged over 1 billion gallons of combined sewer overflows to receiving water bodies. Uh, progress to date, 2018, uh, we actually just did uh, substantial hydraulic uh, sewer metering uh, to see where the flows were at. We have been able to reduce half of that overflow volume with the work that's done to date uh, with 560 million gallons removed with the Hartford treatment plant upgrades, the sewer separation work I mentioned, sewer rehabilitation, as well as some other projects. So substantial amount of progress. When the uh, cell tunnel goes online, we will remove an additional 60 million gallons which leaves us with 464 million gallons in a typical year of combined sewer overflows, which again is the subject for this long-term control plan update to address that remaining work. Uh, the bullet on the bottom there, uh, Save the Sound just released a report a couple weeks ago that noted that the, uh, the water quality in Long Island Sound is significantly improving, which is really important to show that the the work that we're doing in Hartford, as well as the other communities to Long Island Sound, it has benefit to the, to the environment, which is what this is all about, as well as improving the infrastructure. So what has been completed to date in West Hartford, uh, we have uh, rehabilitated 36% of the sewer system uh, over the last a little bit over a decade. Those are all of the yellow sewers that are shown on the map of West Hartford on the right. So those sewers have been rehabilitated, typically with a lining process. Um, and 
And other uh, recently completed projects or, or major projects to point out would be Green Horse Road, Four Mile, and Montclair and Lindbrook, which I know you guys are familiar with. So in the case of Green, Green Horse, it's the purple uh, area down the bottom here. Uh, that was a localized uh, capacity area where we built, uh, we did sewer rehabilitation, we took out private inflow connections, and we built collector drains that were usually in the sidewalk or the snow shelf, and we connect, collect, uh, connected them back to your existing drainage system, and then turned the drainage system over to you. We did a very similar thing for Four Mile Road, which is the red circle on the map. Uh, same, very similar project in the same neighborhood uh, where we did a uh, substantial amount of work and uh, addressed the issues that are there. And then, of course, there's, there's the Montclair and Lindbrook Road area, which you guys heard about uh, last week. That's where the, the, uh, the uh, recent uh, issues were that are currently being addressed. And then the last uh, project to mention is, is under construction is the South Tunnel. That's actually a picture inside the, uh, the tunnel underground. It's 200 feet below ground. That is the tunnel boring machine currently being assembled underground, uh, which will begin, uh, like I mentioned earlier, will begin uh, uh, turning towards West Hartford shortly. So for the next CSO long-term control plan update, the MDC is looking to move toward with an integrated plan. The last update that we submitted in 2012, at around the same time EPA came out with guidance that said that municipalities could consider, consider integrated planning for their long-term control plan planning. So prior to this, municipalities with combined sewer overflows were to consider addressing combined sewer overflows in a silo, separate from all of the different work that they needed to do. Whereas integrated planning allows them to take into consideration all of the work they need to do, both at the wastewater treatment plant, their pump stations, the aging collection system, and to bring that all under one umbrella, an integrated planning umbrella that prioritizes projects that looks at which project is the most important versus the least important and do them in that order versus just strictly spending money on, on say, a, a, a tunnel storage project for uh, combined sewer overflows. And all of this is done while considering an affordability analysis. So why move towards uh, integrated planning? Um, this is a graph of the spending from the MDC, annual spending since 2007 when we were really starting the Clean Water Project. Uh, and and the blue bars are CIP spending. So that is capital improvement spending that is done on ad valorem, which I'll go into a little bit more uh, later. And then the orange bars is the clean water project spending, the spending that is done to do the long-term control plan. And as you move from 2007 to 2017, you can see that the amount of annual spending has been skyrocketing uh, where it's unsustainable to continue at this rate. So, as a result of all of that work that's been done, I mentioned the improvements to the Long Island Sound, which is great, but as a result, we have been ignoring the sewer infrastructure, primarily in Hartford, but as well as in West Hartford. And to date, uh, well, in 2017, the MDC uh, completed 17 emergency repairs that cost about $3.5 million. And in 2018, I'm sure that the number and the value of emergency repairs that are required are going to be significantly higher. And these repairs are happening to major interceptors like Homestead Avenue in Hartford, uh, which is on a major road, and it's a major interceptor uh, for, the, for the collection system. Uh, in addition to that, um, we also have information because we've been televised inspecting our sewers as required by consent decree. We've been televising inspecting our sewers throughout the entire eight member towns. Uh, and we've identified $450 million worth of additional repairs to the aging sewer system that needs to happen that hopefully can occur before an emergency repair where it's a complete road collapse. Uh, you see some pictures here showing uh, some, some of the sewers that need uh, desperate uh, need of repair. These repairs in the past were funded on ad valorem, and that's something to keep in mind as we, as we move forward. So what the integrated planning approach is, is looking to do is in three different volumes of reports. The top ones, which is the buckets uh, along the top here, is the, uh, the, needs, the needs assessment for the MDC. This would be regardless of the combined sewer overflow projects that need to be done. This is what needs to be done to the collection system? I just mentioned $450 million worth of repairs that have been identified from television inspection, pump stations, the wastewater treatment plant. What needs to be done for stormwater in each of the eight member towns? Uh, operation and maintenance consideration, and of course the MDC also has a water system. All of these things will be brought into what is considered volume one, that is a needs assessment. 
Volume two is the projects that is along the bottom with the circles. What these identify, what projects are we going to do that will resolve the combined sewer overflow requirements that we need to achieve. So these, this would be a typical long-term control plan update, the same as what we submitted in 2012 that was ultimately uh, approved in 2014, It'd be very similar to that. Uh, and that's, that is a separate volume report. With the integrated planning projects, what we're look, with the integrated planning approach, what we're looking for is projects that fall in the green rectangle in the middle there. They're infrastructure improvements that address both a need as well as a CSO benefit. Those projects are going to rank very high in the integrated planning process. All of this feeds into volume three, which is a third volume of the report, which is the actual integrated plan. The integrated plan will take into account all of the projects, the ranking system of those projects to identify which is the most important all the way down to the least important, and then we'll develop a long-term schedule to implement those projects. Um, so the dual benefit uh, with, with, the whole, with sewer renewal is to repair infrastructure um, by controlling the wet weather flows, reducing the infiltration inflow into the sewer system while extending the life of the, uh, of the sewer system, and coordinating that with the water main improvements. So we have two primary uh, alternatives that we wound up coming down to. Uh, the alternative on the left is an all tunnel plan that is similar to the existing plan uh, that, that I had mentioned earlier, the, the current long-term control plan. The configuration of the tunnel is a little bit different than what we had identified in 2012 because we have additional data and we've laid out a, a better route for the tunnel. But basically that would be continuing on the current plan. Uh, the plan requires uh, the, the MDC to complete that tunnel work by 2029. We have put the North Tunnel Project on hold and because we've put it on hold, it is not realistic to meet the 2029 deadline. If we were asked to restart the North Tunnel Project, realistically it would take us to 2032 to complete it and it would be an all tunnel solution. The plan on the right is the proposed plan which has, instead of a tunnel coming to northern Hartford, there's sewer separation uh, that's done in the north and, there's also, and it includes the significant amount of sewer rehabilitation that needs to be done both in northern Hartford, throughout Hartford and throughout the other member towns. Um, so uh, now I'll walk through the differences between those two plans. So the north tunnel plan is less expensive uh, if you're just considering the North Tunnel CSOs, it's $282 million. That should be as expected because that's what we had recommended back in the last time when we were considering just addressing combined sewer overflows. That is the cheapest way to do it. But it's not comparing apples and apples. Uh, even though the sewer separation plan is more expensive, uh, slightly more expensive, $350 million, it's lengthening out the spending. Instead of doing it over 14 years in one large project, it's doing it, it's proposing to do it over 40 years in multiple smaller manageable projects while achieving the asset renewal that I've been talking about throughout this presentation and, and while achieving integrated planning. So this is a table that looks at what we are looking at for sewer collection system rehabilitation, which also will reduce infiltration and inflow to the sewer system to help reduce combined sewer overflows. Uh, the, obviously, you have the towns on the, on the left-hand side, and going across the first set of three uh, columns, you have the sewer rehabilitation percentages. The first column is the percentage that's been completed to date. So in West Hartford, you have the 36% of the sewer system that's been rehabilitated to date. The second column, the recommended, is how much more sewer rehabilitation is recommended to be done through this integrated planning process. So an additional 43% in West Hartford for a total of 79% of the sewer system is proposed to be rehabilitated by the, through this uh, integrated plan. Um, and overall, it's a 50% asset renewal to all of the eight uh, district member towns. The columns on the right are the average sewer age of the sewer system. So we take each pipe based on the year it was installed or if it was rehabilitated, and we look at how old that pipe is. So a pipe that was installed in 2018 is 100 years old. I mean. 1918 is 100 years old. A lot of these pipes in Hartford and some of the ones in West Hartford, they date back to the 1800s, even the 1850s. And we look at the average age. So in 2005, you see the average age of the sewer system in the case of West Hartford was 53 years old. If we had ignored the West Hartford sewer system, when we were, would be done with the, with the uh, CSO long-term control plan in, uh, in 2038, the sewer system would have increased to 84 years old. And of course, you would have had additional failures. 
with what we're recommending by doing in West Hartford, the 79% sewer rehabilitation as part of the integrated plan, that average age of the sewer system reduces to 35 years. So it's a significant improvement to the overall sewer system. So what is proposed for West Hartford? Uh, I've mentioned the additional 43% of the sewer for rehab. Um, those are the red pipes that are shown on the West Hartford map on the right. Uh, some of the other future projects that uh, with schedules to be determined is the Oakwood Avenue uh, sewer and water project, which is on the, uh, the uh, southeast uh, corner here of West Hartford. Uh, the Webster Hill Boulevard uh, sewer and water improvements, which is just west of there. And then the project that you heard a lot about um, uh, last Thursday, the WH 29, 30, and 31, which is right in the Lindbrook area, the additional uh, infiltration and inflow reductions and capacity improvements. And one of the important things to note here is the fact that additional drainage needs to be built in order to accomplish that. The majority of the flow that is coming from West Hartford into the sewer system is coming from private connections from the individual homeowner as opposed to the sewer main link leaking the infiltration and inflow. And so similar to what we did on on Greenhurst and Four Mile Road, what has to happen is additional drainage needs to be built to allow the homeowners to be able to connect their sump pumps and foundation drains into the drainage system versus putting them into the sewer system. And projects like that, as mentioned last Thursday, is what you know, West Hartford and the MDC hopefully will consider doing even beyond this area into the future. So switching gears and talking about how MDC uh, customers pay for their, their sewer. They pay for it in two uh, primary ways. There's the clean water project charge, and then there's Avalorum, which goes through the tax bill. The clean water project charge is on the water bill and is allocated to customers based on the metered water consumption. It's on the bill, I'll show a bill on the, su on the subsequent slide, but it's on the bill, uh, but it is not, this analysis does not include the water portion of the bill. This is just the sewer portion of the bill to pay for the clean water project charge. The second way is, is through Avalorum, which is the CIP projects and, and O&M and whatnot that gets billed to the town as part of the Avalorum process, and then that gets passed on from the town to the homeowner through their tax bill. To address the EPA's affordability analysis, we need to consider both of these as to the total amount of burden to the homeowner for, for their sewer service. So this is an example uh, water bill uh, for an MDC customer. It was actually, it was, it, it's, it's just a made up example bill. But the clean water project charge is where the green arrow is on the water bill. It is underneath the federal and state regulatory compliance fees. Uh, the 2018 clean water project charge is $3.80. Um, and so for a, this is an average monthly bill. So an average monthly bill, the, uh, an average customer in West Hartford is paying say $22 a month with this example bill. So how do we make up what the total uh, amount uh, that is paid by the customer uh, for both Avalorm and Clean Water Project? So for the Clean Water Project, we're looking at 2019. The projected Clean Water Project charge in 2019 will go to $4.10 per 100 cubic feet. The average water consumption, we evaluated the actual average water consumption for residents in West Hartford is 7,300 cubic feet, which is about 55,000 gallons a year. And so therefore, the residential portion of the Clean Water Project bill uh, on the water bill is $298. On Avalorum, the estimated residential portion of Avalorum is $9.96 million. That's not the total Avalorum bill to the town. It's the total bill that is appropriated towards the residential uh, dwellings of West Hartford. The total residential dwelling units is 25,987, and therefore taking those 9.96 million and dividing it by the total dwelling units gives you the average that, e that a West Hartford resident pays on the Avalorum uh, on their tax bill for sewers, which is 383. So the total for West Hartford between those two is $681. Looking back at those two scenarios that I mentioned, scenario one was the all tunnel plan. Um, that included the tunnel to North, uh, the, the North Tunnel across the, uh, the Northern Hartford, and also looking at the uh, um, CIP being done through Avalorm with the sewer repairs that would need to be done. Um, that would be scenario one. And comparing that to scenario two, which is the plan of doing an integrated plan, stretching it out over a longer period of time, and looking to prioritize the sewer repairs uh, and shift 
the burden of the sewer repairs from Avalorum onto the Clean Water Project charge. So here is how those two uh, plans compare uh, for a total household bill for a West Hartford resident between scenario one and scenario two. On the left hand side is again the 2019 estimated bill for residents for sewers with the green bar being the Avalorum charge and the blue bar being the Clean Water Project charge, which is the $681 uh, that I mentioned earlier. As you move to the right, each of the two stacks of bars are in five-year increments from 2020 to a projected 2060. The bar on the left is scenario one, which is continuing with the current plan, and the bar on the right is the proposed plan, the integrated plan. So as you move to the right, you can see that with, with, uh, with the burden in, uh, shifted from the Clean Water Project, from the Avalorum to the Clean Water Project charge, you see that the green bar on the left reduces. So the Avalorum cost to each of the towns would be reduced with scenario two. The major differences between these two is scenario one, as I've been mentioning, it, it is going to delay the infrastructure renewal and it's going to do the infrastructure renewal that can be done on Avalorum whereas scenario two is going to prioritize the infrastructure renewal that's needed to be done. And it'll, it'll make us so that we address this infrastructure quicker. And we'll be looking for projects that achieve both goals of reducing CSOs while also uh, renewing the sewer system. So uh, outreach, uh, integrated plan outreach uh, schedule. Um, we had a significant amount of meetings uh, over the course of the last year as part of developing this plan. Uh, 17 of the meetings were attended by uh, DEP. Actually, uh, the Roland Denny from DEP was uh, the one that was in attendance at these 17 meetings. And we discussed with him at length all of the various needs for, for, uh, for the sewer system. We discussed alternatives for addressing the combined sewer overflows. We went through the ranking process with DEP and, uh, and got to where we are today. This plan was presented to the MDC Bureau of Public Works in two workshops in September. It was then subsequently presented to the MDC District Board uh, on October 1st and was approved. And now uh, we're on the roadshow to go to the various town councils to one, inform you of this plan that I'm presenting today. Uh, but two, to uh, gain your support. So I'm um, in West Hartford tonight. I have uh, stops in Windsor, Bloomfield, and Rocky Hill in November, and previously went to Newington, uh, Weathersfield, and East Hartford. And the Hartford meeting is still uh, to be determined. Uh, so the final uh, draft integrated plan will be submitted to the district in November. That plan, uh, these, these set of three reports will be available for uh, public uh, viewing. Uh, at the end of November, there'll be a public hearing on December 11th or 12th in Hartford. Uh, and then all three volumes will be submitted to DEP by December 31st. So next steps, uh, as I mentioned, um, looking to keep you informed of what we are proposing, but more importantly, looking for your support, uh, willing to take any questions you have today. If you have any questions after I leave, please submit them to the uh, district clerk at the email address here, and uh, as well as any comments or uh, letters of support. Uh, so at this point, I'd like to just open up to questions. Thank, uh, thank you. And it's Joe. Can you tell me your last name again? La Liberty. L A L I B E R T E. V E R T E. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. Any questions, Ben? Are you stretching? Okay. Uh, Mr. Barnes. Thank you. Thanks for coming in tonight and sharing this information with us. Um, so the way I read the packet, so starting in 2007, the sewer charge was low. De minimis, you know, whatever the, the I can't tell Zero. from the graph, yeah. right? <laughs> so from 2007 to this year, with respect to residential, we've now gotten up to 9.9 .9 million on the ad valorem, 9.96 million. Oh, okay. Right. Yes. So we, so we do, so just the residential, residential, right? Just residential and no water. We're just talking about sewer. Correct. Right? And so as we look on your page 21, uh, the kind of the growth chart here, left to right, just the sewer charge, and I assume this is in present dollars that, that we're looking at here? No, those. So like, we're not. No, those, it, those are, would be the dollars in the future. So in, in future 2060, <laughs> would, somebody would be paying the equivalent of 2,417? Correct. Okay. Okay, it doesn't sound right to me, but it seems like it would be a lot higher than that in 
twenty sixty dollars. Right. Right. There's inflation in the construction costs, but the proposed bill includes that. Right. So can you? We can't hear, and you know, with the mic for the record. So can you repeat what uh, what the answer is? John, unless you have a different answer, that bill, that projected bill, would be the actual bill in 2060. Correct. Okay, so that's not the, the present value of the Correct, bill. it is the future value. Future value, okay. And so, <clears throat> moving left to right, it looks like the, the charge, the sewer charge, it goes up ad valorem approximately a million dollars or more per year, and by 2060, we're looking at about almost 63 million in sewer charge. Basically, if you take your number and multiply it by the number of dwellings in the previous slides, the total would be about 63 million. Okay, I haven't run that calculation the way you just did, but I'll take your word for okay. it. Okay, so, so that would be the sewer charge. And it looks like it continues to grow. Is there ever a point where we've done the work and we're not outlaying this amount of money for the infrastructure? Or does this go on indefinitely? I would think that when we're done in 2060, there'll be additional sewers that are failing that need to be addressed. Okay, so this is, I, so we never get to a point where everything's up to, you know, grade, so to speak, and then we have a break before we continue to go back into to fixing these sewers again. I I think that what we what what you would be what the MDC would likely be doing from 2060 on would be the other half of the sewer system that hadn't been addressed, which will at that point in time be 40 years older. Okay. And, and the cost that we're looking at here, it's just sewer. It doesn't include the, the water charge. Correct. Right. Okay. And so when we look at, at the, the slide for the, the last 10 years of spend, there's a note at the bottom. It says MDC spending rate over the last decade is not sustainable, right, because the amount of increases that we're seeing in our communities isn't sustainable. We can't absorb those increases year after year, right? I have heard, yes, I have heard from residents and town councils uh, on my journeys throughout the last 10 years that uh, the amount that, the, that bills are going up is, is substantial. Right. And they're looking for relief. So what we're looking to do is to try to stretch it out over a longer period of time, as opposed to continuing on the current path, which would build another tunnel system right away. Okay. And I assume that's why the EPA allows for this integrated planning mechanism to address the unsustainability issue, to allow for some sustainability and being able to stretch that out to reduce the cost in some, some way, right? Where the integrated planning process originated from was from the council of mayors um, that grouped together, that banded together, that were combined sewer overflow communities, and they felt like they were getting hit in different silos for different things, different permit requirements, none of which were addressing the failing infrastructure. And they banded together and proposed to EPA that all of these things need to be considered under an umbrella of an integrated plan, as opposed to you just forcing me to do all of my combined sewer overflow projects first, while I have sewers on Homestead Avenue that collapse. Okay, all right, <clears throat> thank you. And so when the, I guess it was a court order or consent decree was implemented to the wheels in motion for this project. What did, if you know, what did the projected cost of this look like? And was it the way it's set out here, or did at some point did it kind of go off the tracks? And if so, why why are we seeing such higher costs now? Um, why are we experiencing the higher costs? In two thousand five dollars, the original for the combined sewer overflow projects that were conceived at that time. There've been different projects they've shifted but in 2005 in 2005 dollars it was estimated that the clean water project would be 1.6 billion dollars some of you may recall that number yep. we have been able including today to de-escalate things back and we're pretty close to 1.6 billion dollars so what we're doing is we're extending it over a longer period of time so originally the 1.6 billion was to be spent over 15 years which that value escalated was $2.1 billion. That's where that, if you call it 2.1. We have since 
Escalate, we have since extended the schedule from, we were originally to be uh, completed 15 years from 2020, from 2006 would be 2021. We have since, with approvals from DEP, extended the schedule from 2021 to 2029. As part of that extension, extension projects escalated as well. Um, but with our proposed 40-year plan, the CSO projects that we are looking at, if you de-escalated back, we're pretty close to the original budget. They're not the exact projects originally, but I don't think it's a case of the costs have increased. I think it's, we've been extending the schedule and looking to do more cost-effective projects. Okay, so it sounds like from your explanation, you're on budget and the costs that we're experiencing were expected. They may be carried out over a slightly longer period of time, but this was <coughs> contemplated at the time uh, that this uh, plan was put in place. Yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Barnes. Anybody else? Mr. David. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So uh, your purpose of coming here this evening is to update us. Are you, are you looking for opinions on scenario one or scenario two, or is that a decision that's going to be made by our uh, MDC commissioners? I'll, I'll take any comments at all. I'll certainly we'll take your opinions on scenario one versus scenario two. The MDC has approved um, going forward with scenario one. They think it's a better plan for the MDC as well as the member towns, the public, and... and Scenario two, sorry, oh boy, <laughs> scenario two. Um, but, you know, asking for your support and, and with a member from DEP here, um, but an answer that I would give anyway would be, you know, DEP's answer back to this is going to be to try to do it faster and focus more on just the combined sewer overflow projects. And what we would be looking for for each of the town council support, as well as the public support, we heard from Weathersfield there was one after another that came up saying, you know, I need things to slow down. My bill's going, you know, crazy. You guys are doing too much work all at once. So I'd be looking from all the town councils and the public to understand that the MDC is committed to the requirements of the consent order, consent decree that are related to combined sewer overflows and sanitary sewer overflows. They're just looking for more time and they're looking to be able to prioritize projects to address the infrastructure needs. I, I, I can appreciate that. So when we get to 2060, I'll be like 96, 98 years old or something like that. So I think the people that are sitting in the back that are the high school students will probably be in a better position to determine whether or not uh, it's affordable and sustainable. Okay. But what I have heard from our residents uh, when they do get their bills is, uh, it, ouch, it hurts. Every month it hurts. Okay. Um, I, I, I was one of the... Uh, proponents and, and, and advocated that we got monthly billing because when you'd get a bill every three months, it was always a mystery, okay, what you did for the past quarter. But now you can see month to month and you can say, well, maybe I have a leak here or something's not right here and you can adjust it uh, before the damage gets any worse. So thank you for, for doing that. And I think that's been very helpful to the consumer that this utility has basically operated like other utilities, whether it be the gas company, the phone company, uh, the electric company, that they can see what their usage is uh, over over a month-to-month -month basis instead of trying to figure it out over a quarterly basis. So that's been quite helpful. Um, obviously, we have a responsibility to future generations with respect to um, clean water and our environment and making certain that the planet that we're currently using uh, is left in a better condition for the, the next generation going forward. But what also figures into it is the ability of the people who currently reside uh, within the district to uh, make the, the payments to, to pay the bills. Uh, I would say most people uh, have the expectation that they're going to pay their bills and they want to pay their bills uh, on time and uh, to pay their fair share for uh, those costs that they're incurring. So if the recommendation of the MDC is that scenario two is better and more appropriate and that's going to uh, help our residents and our constituents in the short term as well as in the long term. And in the short term I mean uh, the ability to, uh, to pay the bill as it's coming due and in the long term make the improvements that are necessary, then I think scenario two is the right way to go. So that, that's all I can uh, offer based on the data that you presented here this evening. Um, uh, w w without hearing any arguments to the contrary, I, I, don't, I don't have any basis to make any other uh, recommendation. 
So um, I don't know what else you'd be looking for for us as policymakers sitting on the West Harbor Town Council to offer you this evening. But that's just my observation based on the data that you provided in your in your PowerPoint. So. I, I appreciate uh, your comments. And May I yes, of course. Can I just stick in here. Hi, Susan Negrelli, Director of Engineering for MDC. I, I just want to add one comment. Um, you know, every year, you know, I know John and, you know, uh, Peter, we get together, we do our budget increases, we talk about MDC's budget, ad valorem. We hear the town councils about how our ad valorem is increasing. We spend on sewer uh, 35 million plus eight on combined, about 43 million a year on sewer CIP. That debt, every year we're spending that money, and that debt is going on to ad valorem. So that is an average 8% per year increase on ad valorem alone. That just the debt from our capital. What we are trying to do here is move, help the town council, help keep that ad valorem lower, move that debt into our clean water project pay for it. So, I mean, the, ultimately, our customers are paying for it. It's coming through the clean water project charge now and not ad valorem as much. I don't know if that helps. You can see the bars on scenario two are lower overall for the customer, but it's taking some of the debt off of ad valorem and putting it into the clean water project. I just wanted to clarify that a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to finish uh, the debate as to ad valorem and how ad valorem uh, impacts uh, the town of West Hartford in particular is different than how ad valorem impacts other member towns and that's an issue uh, that's not part of the discussion here this evening but it really is because ad valorem is ad valorem in, in terms of in terms of costs okay so I understand there's a, a separate study being done with respect to um, ad valorem versus direct uh, use uh, payments and, and, and how that impacts, but uh, has been demonstrated by our town council in, in the past, uh, West Hartford's share under the ad valorem, we, we feel uh, is unfair to, to our residents based on our grand list. And uh, I don't think I would want to uh, advocate for anything that would uh, undermine that argument. But uh, based on this evening's presentation as to you're showing me just two different proposals, I would want to just clarify that my remarks were um, centered towards scenario one or scenario two and uh, really not the bigger picture of the ad valorem, and I would want that to be so noted. Thank you, Mr. Ava. Mr. Sweeney? Rod, thank you for this presentation. Uh, appreciate the abundancy of transparency here uh, <coughs> looking into the future. Uh, I think one of the questions, I have two questions. Um, one is, how how do these escalating costs for our region compare to other regions in the country in regards to maintaining of sewer systems and water? And then the other uh, would be how would this uh, match up with other utilities that residents are paying as well? Uh, we actually did a uh, benchmark to the Hartford MDC. I don't have the slides with me, but I can try to remember it the best I can. Uh, but we did benchmark uh, the Hartford MDC against equivalent uh, communities that have combined sewer overflow uh, issues. Um, I would say that the average of all eight member towns is about average for the sewer costs to comparable CSO communities. But if you look at just Hartford on its own, it's towards the high end of burden uh, compared to other communities. I think there was only maybe four communities that had higher burden than Hartford uh, for the dollars being spent on on the, on the for paying for sewers. So MDC as a whole, it's about average. <laughs> Looking specifically at Hartford, it's above average. Great. Well, <clears throat> we, we love our neighbors uh, in Hartford, but we this council really cares about our town. Understand. So, so can you provide us with that slide? It's, it's, it's helpful for us when we're talking to residents to be able to see something like that yeah, absolutely Thank I can you. we can provide that in a follow-up and and then additionally uh, just following up on the the utility piece in regards to how you're comparing to other utilities do you have something along that line you, so the comparative so uh, like we have projections for 2060 here do we have can you also just pace it out for other utilities as if, if you you can or you have done just so residents can understand like water isn't ex if, if their water and sewer is expected to to 
increase of this, are they also seeing energy costs increase at the same rate? Just so that we can make this make sense to people, because if we explain this, we show this as people right now, that this is going to be something that will be difficult to explain to them. We have present day comparisons, but we, we I don't have, you know, I would love to see the <laughs> the cable company puts, first of all, cable right now, you're probably paying $2,000 now a year in your bill, right. but I would love to see them forecast out 40 years and put it on a slide and see what people think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, it's just, it's just, it's just for, for me in regards to maybe like natural gas or your energy. We can do present day. We yeah. can look at present day, but I don't have any you know, great. as to how they are. We could look at how much they've gone up, say in the past, say five or ten years, what their rate of, gone, of, of, of increase has been. I know every year my cell phone bill, my electric bill, my gas bill, my cable bill, every year all of those bills go up. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Sweeney. Ms. Kerrigan had a question. I know Mr. Barnes has a question. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you for presenting this. Um, appreciate it. Um, in my short um, experience in government, I've come to learn that there are there's a lot of grant money out there, lots of grant money out there. What's the likelihood and, and how aggressive are we with pursuing some federal grants to help fund this so the burden isn't falling upon the shoulders of the taxpayers? So in... Um in the great state of Connecticut, actually, the state of Connecticut DEP funds uh, for combined sewer overflow projects, they have 50% grant. Um, that is pretty much unmatched to any other state in the country. I think it's probably the highest or at least tied for the highest. I don't think there's another state that has that. So in the state of Connecticut, DEP is funding 50% of these projects, which is substantial. Comparison to Massachusetts right next door, they get 0% grant, uh, as do many other states. Uh, on the federal side, um, when the last ARA projects came out, the MDC did have projects. That was the uh, incinerator, um, the uh, heat recovery project was an ARA project, so they did receive the federal funding on that. If there is another infrastructure bill, we hope that there is, we certainly would look to capitalize as much as we can on the federal money available for that. Thank you, Ms. Kerrigan. Mr. Right, and these numbers include the grants and assume that the state of Connecticut continues to provide the 50% yeah. grant for CSO projects. <laughs> okay, Mr. Barnes. Right. And one pick, picking up on that last point, the, the state grant is through taxpayer funding, right? So just another way for us to pay for it, right? I mean, we're, we're paying income tax and taxes collected by the state. They turn around and provide a grant. It's another way for us to. There's, there's this federal money that is provided to the state as part of the process. Oh, well. it is. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, one question on scenario one versus scenario two. The the capital spending is reduced from uh, 45 million in scenario one to 23 million in scenario two. If you go right there, right there. So you can see the reduction in in capital spend for the projects. Yeah, that's on the CIP side that goes toward Avalorum. So that's where you're seeing the shift where, as Susan uh, Negrelli was pointing out, the current plan is $35 million is spent on CIP projects through the Avalorum. Mm -hmm. In scenario two, that's reduced to $15 million a year that would be spent on CIP projects through Avalorum. And the bird, the, 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 to do those projects, which are infrastructure renewal projects, which help the CSO system, would be done on the clean water project charge with scenario two. Okay. And I guess the, the question I have is with that reduction, that to the extent that there are emergency situations in the community, you know, like some of the pictures that we saw up there, that there will be money to take care of those issues. And particularly to avoid an instance down the road where you know, we have an emergency situation and somebody says, well, we, didn't, we can't do that because we adopted scenario two and we cut the funding for that. I just want to make sure that to the extent we have those yeah. issues that they will always be addressed under either scenario. There is still the, 50, uh, the 15 million on the, on the CIP for scenario two includes 10 million for unforeseen infrastructure repair that would still need to be done on an emergency basis. Okay, so that just drops down from right. scenario one, that 10 million? But the intent is to do, the intent is that to proactively 
rehabilitate the sewer system so that over time the failures will start occurring at a lower frequency because we would have rehabilitated the pipe before it failed. Right. And that rehabilitation is being prioritized on a scenario two to be done in the next 20 years. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Oh, Mr. Lair. Turning to your slide on page 21. Uh, Oh, yeah. Um, I assume that you have done a slide like this for each of the towns? We did, yes. Could In we, each town will, yes. Could we get copies of all of those slides? Yes. Because if, if I'm looking at this the right way, by shifting from the ad valorem to the user fee, and you heard Councillor Davidoff allude to this, um, West Hartford has always been of the view that shifting to a straight user fee would be more proportional and would benefit our residents. Um, to the extent that the ad valorem in West Hartford is taking up less of the cost and the clean water project is taking more of the cost, you're shifting it to the user fees. I would assume that that's happening in every other town and particularly I'm interested in knowing what happens in Hartford and I note that you're your talk with them is still TBD. So I'm wondering if there is hesitancy in Hartford. I, I think that the plan is that Hartford is trying to pick between two dates. Okay. I don't think it's because they're trying to pick between two dates. But for their does the project, does the scenario one, scenario two alternative flip in Hartford in terms of what the costs are for them? It does. And I think you indicated earlier that the MDC is at the present time committed to scenario number two. Has the board actually voted on anything? They voted and approved it on October 1st. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lair. I actually was going to request the same, um, the same uh, page 21 for all the uh, municipalities like Mr. Lair did. I, so, Madam Mayor, actually, yes. I, I apologize. I forgot one. Um, I think you indicated we have somebody from DEP here. D Correct. DEP yes. Here. Um, the consent decree also includes the EPA. Uh, has has anybody talked with EPA about whether this change would affect um, the proportionality analysis required under the EPA regs for the ad valorem? Um, and when was the last time anybody talked to the EPA about that proportionality analysis? If you know. Two parts to that question. I, I can answer the first part well. The second part, I may need help. Um, but the first part is the consent decree. So the, M the MDC has a consent decree with the EPA for sanitary sewer overflows. They have a consent order with DEP for combined sewer overflows. For the consent decree with the EPA, we will still complete our milestone by the end of 2023 by building the salt tunnel. So okay. once the salt tunnel is online, because that project is already ongoing, we would have eliminated all of the sanitary sewer overflows, the structural sanitary sewer overflows. So uh, this plan is going to be submitted to DEP. Connecticut is a delegated state. Right. They'll be the ones that review the plan and, and ultimately uh, decide to approve it or not. As to the last time, the Avalorum had been discussed with EPA. I'm guessing it was probably a long time ago. Or I, I don't know. I, okay. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Allaire. Um, all good questions. Um, we, I see a resident from uh, Linwald in the, uh, or a couple residents um, from our, our latest impacted neighborhood. Um, uh, in the audience, and I, I wanted to uh, ju uh, just confirm, maybe for the record, that what this does is actually concentrates on neighborhood failures uh, and addresses them in a, uh, a more um, a planned way, rather, you know, the, um, the second option, uh, as opposed to concentrating um, minimizing, uh, I guess, the rate of the repairs on this and concentrating on the North Tunnel and the North Tunnel also having a shorter life than the life of these repairs. Correct. So um, there are 
multiple projects that will make up the combined sewer overflow long-term control plan. One major project will be the downtown tunnel that still needs to be built. This proposal, and that is equivalent to the tunnel that would need to be built, that also extended into North Hartford, that would be built over the next you know, decade or so. The concept is to shift that out to start in 2038 to allow for this infrastructure renewal to occur in that time frame. While that is going on, there is a number of combined sewer overflow projects, the sewer separation projects in North Hartford. There's some, uh, there's some interceptor projects in Hartford. Those combined sewer overflow projects will still be going on throughout the next 20 years. It's just shifting the $500 million downtown tunnel into the future to allow for us to do those infrastructure projects. Okay. And as you concentrate on some of the older systems, really primarily Hartford and West Hartford, in the beginning of that period, bless you, of that period of time, there is other aging infrastructure, as Mr. Barnes said, that there's going to be, obviously we're on the young side at that point at the end of the, and but there's other aging like East Hartford and uh, Rocky Hill and Windsor at that point that have not had the same uh, investment um, and so those you would expect would be more uh, in need of repair and ours would be a more uh, sustainable um, and, and reliable system at that point. Correct. Right. And actually, I would say the majority of the failures of the sewer system, uh, a lot of them have been happening in Hartford, which is the oldest system. So it is trending with age. And, and, and West Hartford has sewers that also date back to almost just as old. Okay. Uh, all right. I, I guess that's all I had. I mean, I, I do think, obviously, that the, the, the I, everybody seems to agree that the second option is the best option um, for not only the sustainability and the reliability of the system, but the affordability of the system. Correct? Thank you. Okay. Mr. Barnes. Yeah, I was just going to follow up. Will we have, you know, staff comment uh, on this proposal? Will we have anybody provide any advice to council? from the West Hartford perspective for them having reviewed this plan to advise us on the scenarios? We, we could do that, although the board has, um, has already taken its action. Um, <laughs> so the, the utility. <laughs> the, the so utility so you're saying it doesn't limited. matter. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. Great. Thank you. <laughs> nice try. Good. Okay. Mr. Oh, did you have Mr. Dodge? No, it, it, it gets a question. I, I, I've been wondering throughout this whole thing, which is why? Yeah, why now are you coming to us? I was surprised when you said that the board had already voted, and you said you were coming to us for our support. Su support for what? I mean, this is done, right? It would, it would be support for it. Certainly, the, the report is available for everybody to view. Um, it'll be available at the end of November before we submit it to DEP. We welcome any any comments from the public. Town councils, Dwayne Martin, whoever, whoever has comments on it, we will take them into consideration before submitting a final copy uh, to DEP. Um, but I would say that, yeah, what we're looking for is your support as we go to submit it to DEP. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Mr. Dodge. Mr. Barnes. Okay, so with that clarification, whether, you know, Dwayne or somebody could look at it and advise, you know, I'm not an expert in just about everything I just heard. So, um, you know, I'd love to have somebody that, you know, understands this and can give us an opinion from town staff saying, yes, we agree, we think scenario two is the right way to go because whatever the reasons are. We will do that. Thank you. And, and, and uh, hopefully by then we will have all the comparative data to all the other communities represent. Uh, yes, we will follow up with you with that. Okay. Anything else? All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate your uh, thank you very much and presenting. All right. While the uh, okay. so uh, we have uh, number eleven reports from Corporation Council. Mr. Lair. I. Um, we actually, that's not uh, protocol, but we can suspend the rules for you to make a comment if, if uh, let me just find out. Well, hold on. For, 
last bit of the, the discussion where you were saying, you know, the support and the input. And, you know, I, my input, my support was, you know, when is that, is the Lindbrook Road project, is that on the document? Okay. I will have I will have the town manager follow up with you in MDC after the meeting. Sorry, thank you so much. <laughs> I do didn't really, but thank you for. I under I understand your concern, and uh, and we will have um, follow up on that. Okay. Yes. Um, okay, Mr. Lair, Mr. Lair, number one. I have no formal report. Um, I just want to mention two things. The first is we do need an executive session tonight. Um, uh, we do need an executive session tonight for the purpose of uh, talking about a possible um, appointment of special counsel to deal with a regulatory matter, um, uh, and then we may take action if you choose to after that uh, in public session. Uh, the other thing is that I will be away for your next council meeting, so you will be visited by a guest attorney to be named later. Okay. Thank you very much. Surprise attorney. <laughs> okay. Great. Nothing better. Okay. <laughs> now that we're at full strength, I have my choice of two. So <laughs> I know. Hey, very exciting. Uh, we have no appointments. Um, number 16, Ms. Kerrigan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move adoption of the consent calendar. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. No communications, no petitions. I make a motion we adjourn. No. no. Executive session. I'll, 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 I'll make a motion we go into executive session. I apologize. And I had it right there. Um, yeah, <laughs> wishful second. thinking. Um, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Um, Pat, you want me to just grab Matt?
What inning? What inning? What inning is it? Bottom of the third. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> a little tap dance. All right. I'll see you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. All right. Thank you, Peter. Great right. job. I think it was about the firm. I don't think it was. Yeah, it was his firm has some proceeding going on where Attorney Flossberg is on the other side. And rather than create any issue, Ready? I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules to adopt a resolution. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution authorizing an appropriation for West Hartford to retain counsel to address ALS billing and related issues. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries. Aye. We're adjourned. Thank <laughs> you.